Hello everyone, my name is Oquandia and I am the Solutions Engineer here at Electronique. Today I'm going to be giving you guys a brief overview of our Electronique Orchestrator software as a service. Once you go ahead and get to your login screen, you'll see that you have the ability to either enter your credentials or continue using Google. We have added the Google Authenticator for efficiency purposes. I'm going to go ahead and start getting into our actual platform. Once you get logged in, you'll be met with your Welcome to My Electronique screen. I would like to take a moment to go ahead and point out our audit logs. We do have the ability to go in and view audit logs based on events, users, the user IP address, the status, the category, as well as the component and the operation. You're also able to go in and see the time. If you would like to see more information, you can hit the info button here, and this will show you the information listed in an organized fashion. You also have the ability to go in and download these logs and specify in between a specific date range. I'm going to go ahead and jump into Teams. In Teams, once you select the orchestrator, software as a service, you will be able to set roles. In the orchestrator software as a service, the roles that are offered is admin and analyst. An admin can publish and schedule bots using API and webhooks, as well as using integrations in the multi-tenancy feature. The analyst is able to see the analytics and can monitor bot's performance. They're also able to view dashboards and logs, but they cannot modify any settings or manage any bots inside of the orchestrator. Once you are met with the orchestrator dashboard, you will see your bot runners, your robots activity, your launches, your workflows, your top buy launches, and your next launches. In your bot runners, you'll be able to see what bot runners are ready, busy, and offline. In robots activities, you'll be able to see the hour form of the robots activity in the last 24 hours, the last week, or the last month. In launches, you'll be able to see the success and error of the last 24 hours, the last week, and the last month. For workflows, this will show you the total workflows of bots that's been created, as well as any bots that has been scheduled or running now. In top by launches, this is where you would find your information on how many workflows have been launched. You'll also be able to see any next launches that you have set up. I'm going to go ahead and input some information in here so I can give you guys a deeper look at the workflows, how bot runners work, the integrations that we have, as well as multi-tenancy in the settings that we have. Now that we have some information populated into this screen, I want to go ahead and jump into the workflows to give you guys a deeper outlook on what that entails. In your workflows, this is where you will be able to see the orchestrator name, as well as the bot that is listed in that orchestrator, as well as how many assigned bot runners that this specific workflow has been deployed to. You'll also be able to see the next launch time if there is a schedule set, as well as the bot status, you do have the ability to go in and run bots using a webhook link. You also have the ability to run now and do some alternative actions. I'm going to dive deeper into some actions. Once you go ahead and click into the action screen, you'll see the name of the bot as well as the description if there was one placed. You'll also see the orchestrator name that that bot has been issued to and how many assigned bot runners that bot has also been issued to. You'll see the next launch, as well as any scheduled time, the status, and you'll also see the ability to send email alerts on failure. Once you input your email address,
you can hit comma after you submit your email address and you'll be able to input any additional recipients to receive an email alert on failure. Here you'll find the ability to activate webhook URL and copy the link to run the workflow by an HTTP request. This toggle switch here is to collect execution logs automatically. You'll also see the bot runner for now running. You'll also see the bot runner for running now. Option availability here. This allows you to choose which bot runner you would like to run that bot on currently. Once you have selected a bot, you'll be able to hit run here and that bot will run on that specified machine. Down below where it says run history, this is where you'll be able to see the status and history of your bots that have been ran. You'll be able to see the time, the workflow, the launch status, the duration, the launch type, as well as the user. Over here on this panel here, you'll also see that you have additional options to view logs. This hazard symbol is for you to go in and view the error that may have happened with the bot that was being ran. In the error details, this is where you would find the activity of where the error occurred, which would be click on element. You'll find the file of where the error exists. You'll also find the date and time as well as any error message. In this screen, you are able to copy error to clipboard to paste that information elsewhere. Going into the additional options where you are able to view the log, this will populate any information that happened regarding that specific status. Here you'll be able to save the log to a file as well as view any information that was regarding that specific run. Going into Assigned Bot Runners, here is where you would be able to do central deployment. In Assigned Bot Runners, you'll see all of the bot machines that the bot has been assigned to, as well as the status. You'll also be able to see the token name if a token was distributed. To execute central deployment, you would go into Configure Bot Runners. You would select the participants who you would like to deploy the bot to Once you have selected the recipients that you would like to deploy the bot to, you'll be able to hit save and those machines will have access to those bots. Once you go into schedules, here is where you will have the ability to go in and set a schedule. If there is a schedule set, you'll be able to see the type of schedule as well as the time zone, the period, the date and time settings, the status, as well as any additional actions that may be applicable. Going into hit schedule, this is where you'll be able to identify the type, whether it be a repeatable run. Your repeatable run can be hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, or custom. You'll also be able to set up any restrictions as well as schedule a result. If you do a one-time run, you'll be able to go in and specify the time zone as well as the date and time. And you'll also be able to go in and set up any restrictions and result information. Going ahead and jumping into bot runners. In bot runners, you'll be able to see the information regarding the bot runners and the machine that they have been installed on you'll see the orchestrator name for the approved bots, as well as the bot runner and the machine that it is running on. If a token has been distributed, you'll be able to see that token name and the status. If there is a unapproved bot that still needs to wait for an answer, you will see it listed under not approved. That information will show you the machine name, the bot runner name, the token name, as well as the IP address that that machine is linked to. In the tokens tab, this is where you will find the information regarding any tokens that you may have. 
This is for you to go in and generate a token to be able to paste it into the bot runner and come back into the orchestrator and approve the bot runner to be able to run those bots on that specific machine. In your tokens tab, you'll find the token name, who that specific token was generated by, as well as the date that it was generated and any connected bot runners that is currently connected to that token. You do have the ability to go in and generate an access token. To generate an access token, you'll be able to set the token name. And this will provide you an access token that you're able to download or copy. You will also have some documentation to show you how to use the token. This will take you to a help page that we have developed to assist you on how to connect BotRunner to the orchestrator. Once you have a token established, you'll be able to go in and manage that token. You can edit the name, and you're also able to go in and manage the connected bot runners. You're also able to go in and deactivate a token here. You can also deactivate a token directly from the right-hand panel that states deactivate. Once you deactivate a token, it will give you a message asking you, are you sure? It will let you know the actions that will be done as far as the bot runner machine side, and you can go in and hit deactivate, and that token will no longer be active and will be deleted. Jumping into your integrations, I love to point out that we do have integrations with Zapier. This is where you can connect your workflows to be ran through Zapier. We also have the ability to go in and run bots via API key. You do have the ability to go in and generate a key. This key can be viewed and copied directly within the orchestrator. We also provide you some documentation, specifying some details on some helpful tips and API keys that you are able to utilize within our system. Those are regarding bot runners, workflows, and launches. In multi-tenancy, this is where you'll be able to see your connected orchestrators. And those will be specified by orchestrator name the team, as well as the owner. You also have the ability to connect an orchestrator here using a access key, or you're able to go in and generate an access key here. In this side ability to edit, you'll be able to edit the name of an orchestrator, as well as go in and unlink an orchestrator. In settings, you'll find our features. Here you can go in and check the ability to execute anti-captcha. What this does is it automatically solves the captcha. We do currently support the reCAPTCHA v2. Those can be automatically solved within a workflow. This does not require any additional actions from the robot. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to our Electronique Orchestrator Software as a Service Overview video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please remember to comment, like, and subscribe. And remember, happy automation with Electronique. Thank you.